Okay, now we're going to learn how to fill in our unit circle using these exact values. So I'm going to start by labeling what all the angles are. I'd start at 0 degrees, then go up 30, go up 15, go up 15, then go up 30 to get to 90 degrees. Then do the same pattern again. Go up 30, 15, 15, and 30 to get to 180 degrees, and then 30, 15, 15, and 30, and then 30, 15, 15, and then that would take us up to 360 degrees would lie at the same place where zero degrees would. Now, if you remember the pattern from what we just did, my cos values come first and I start with one, then I go to three, two, one, and zero. My sign started at zero and then went one, two, and three. and finished at one. If I keep rotating, then we can see that these two points have the same height. And these two points have the same height. And these two points have the same height. And so on and so forth. So all I do when I get to the next point is my x and y values stay the same for equivalent points. It's just now my x is going to be negative. So instead of 1 and 2 and root 3 over 2, I'm going to have negative cos and positive sign. And I can keep the pattern going negative cos, positive sign, negative cos, and positive sign, negative cos, positive sign. In quadrant three, they're both negative. So I have negative root three over two, negative one over two negative root 2 over 2 and negative root 2 over 2 and negative 1 over 2 negative root 3 over 2 to get down on the bottom to the point of 0 and negative 1 and finally in my quadrant 4 my cos is positive and my sign is negative. And I've filled all the way around my unit circle. I can use this unit circle to find the exact value of trig ratios going up to 360. So I'm going to use it for the point of 240 on my unit circle here. For the point of 240, I can say that sine is going to be my y value. The y value is negative root 3 over 2. Cos is my x value. That's going to be negative 
1 over 2. And tan is going to wind up being my sine divided by my cos. Or sine multiplied by the reciprocal of cos. The negative and negative will cancel out, and I just get positive root 3, which makes sense because in this quadrant, tan should be positive. I can also use these in order to solve for rotations. In this case, if I know I have point A, which is going to be negative root 2 over 2 and root 2 over 2, and B, which is going to be negative 1 over 2 and negative root 3 over 2. If I'm rotating counterclockwise from A to B and I want to figure out what angle I've rotated, then I can say that in this case, if I have point A, then I'm going to look on my unit circle and say, well, what is the only angle that has negative root 2 over 2 and positive root 2 over 2, and point A is going to be at 135 degrees. Point B for negative 1 over 2 and negative root 3 over 2 is going to be at 240 degrees. Now I'm just looking for what the rotation between them is. And if I want the rotation between them, I'm looking for what is the difference between these two points. 240 minus 135, well, it's rotated 105 degrees. I can also use this unit circle and the cast ratio or in the uh, cast rule in order to find what the exact angles are or the exact ratios are for any of these. If I have sine of 135, then I'm just going to go to 135 and find what the y value is. At 135, the y value is positive root 2, sorry, not 3, positive root 2 over 2. At 210 degrees, the x value is negative 1 over 2, which makes sense because in quadrant 3, cos should be negative. At 315 degrees, I'm going to get negative root 2 over 2 for the y value divided by root 2 over 2 for the x value. which is just going to give me negative 1. If I'm doing negative 60, then I'm going to rotate clockwise. And here, if I rotate clockwise to 60 degrees, I can get a coterminal point or an equivalent point that is going to end at positive 300 degrees. This would give me a sine value of negative root 3 over 2. Cos of 225 is going to give me an x value of negative root 2 over 2. Tan of negative 240 would be the same as tan of positive 120 degrees. And at tan of 120 degrees, well, I'm going to take my root 3 over 2 divided by negative 1 over 2 and just get negative root 3.
For sine of 390 degrees, I'm going to do one full rotation all the way around to get to 360, and then I need to do another 30 degrees to get up to that 90, which means that my coterminal point, or an equivalent angle, would be at sine of 30 degrees, because once we get to 360, it just wraps back to zero. This is going to give me 1 over 2. For cos of negative 570, that would be the same as negative 360, and then going an extra 210. So this would be the same as cos of negative 210, and negative 210 would be the same as cos of positive 150, which would give me negative root 3 over 2.